All righty, welcome everyone. Good morning, my name is Allie. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And we are going to be exploring today. We're gonna to be exploring how and why we train animals. All right, so uh, we do have the opportunity for you to actually interact with us. So if you would like to, we're gonna put a number up right below here. Uh, in just a moment, it's going to be 562-286-1838. There it is, popped up magically right here. Uh, if you'd like to text that number, texting rates do apply, but I have my friend uh, Sarah over at the computer ready to take all of your comments, all of your questions, all of your observations. And then I have my friend James behind the computer over here uh, putting up all these really cool things behind me. Now, if you're not watching this live, so not Monday uh, at 10 a.m., <laughs> uh, and you do still have questions, that's awesome too, but we're gonna have you email us. And that's this email right below here. It's live at lbaop.org. Alrighty, everyone. So we are going to be talking all about how and why we train animals. All right, so I want you to think, well, why would we train animals? How could that help? Hmm. Well, believe it or not, we train actually most of our animals here at the aquarium. We even train, yes, our sharks. Yeah, we do train our sharks. They are fed to go to a certain location to eat. Mm -hmm. So actually from time to time, early in the morning, you can actually turn this on uh, around 8 a.m. You can turn on our webcams on our website. This is what this is right here. And you can see uh, them actually be fed at the surface here and they know exactly where to go to be fed. Uh, our sharks are also trained to be lifted out of the water, to flip over uh, on command, to you know give them a, a nice belly check and everything like that. But uh, we also train a variety of our other animals like birds or most famously I think here at the aquarium are seals and sea lions. So my friend is actually going to help us out today. We're going to be talking to Captain Joe. Now Captain Joe is an ocean ranger here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and you know what I think he's hanging out around the seals and sea lions right now. Um, let's go ahead and check in with him. Joe? Captain Hello, Joe? Hello everyone. Welcome to our seal and sea lion habitat. Today we're here to investigate the differences between these two very special marine mammals. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, awesome. So we are going to explore the differences between seals and sea lions. A lot of times we get it kind of mixed up, but they are actually very different animals. So let's see if we can identify some of the things that make a sea lion separate from a seal. Now here, it's not real, it's just a fleshy, but this is a sea lion. Now, what do you notice about this sea lion? Hmm, what stands out to you? Whereas here, I have a seal. Now, of course, these are plushies, right? So the size, not real. <laughs> but what do you notice between the two? Hmm, well, I notice that their coloration is a little bit different. Do you notice that too? Yeah, this one, our seal, our harbor seal, has lots of spots kind of like a cookies and cream color. Whereas our sea lion, our California sea lion, has that nice smooth chocolate brown coloration. Hmm, what else do you notice? Hmm, I notice that, I know this one's a little smaller, but it actually has really long front flippers. Well, believe it or not, the seal's flippers are really short and they don't really walk on them at all. Seals have a fused hip bone and really short little front flippers. So they move kind of like an inchworm on land. Oh, here is a great picture of one of our harbor seals. Um, and they have really short front flippers and actually have fingernails on them as well. And they kind of inch around on land like a big fuzzy inchworm. It is called, are you ready for this? Very scientific word. It is called galumphing. Mm -hmm. That's a real word, galumphing. Uh, <laughs> so that's how seals move on land. Whereas sea lions, sea lions with those long front flippers, they can actually walk on all fours. They can actually move around kind of like a dog. They have a rotating hip bone 
and those nice long front flippers so they're able to walk on all four. Oh, we have another observation coming in that they have different body shapes. I agree, this one's a little more sleek, has its head up a little bit more, whereas our seal is more like a potato. Yeah, more like a sausage. Um, yes, definitely, I agree with that observation as well. Oh, here's a great picture of one of our California sea lions with one of our volunteers here tossing a toy into its mouth. So you can see their nice sleek bodies coming on up. Now, another difference that I notice is actually on the sides of their heads. Now, I know it might be a little hard to see, but let's go ahead and look at their ears. Hmm, what do you notice? Well, do you see ears on this one? Yeah, I do too. How about on this one? Oh, I don't see any ears either. Well, that is because, well, sea lions have these external ear flaps. They have these little ears on either side of their head. But seals do have ears too. They're just kind of smooth. You can barely see them. They're like little pinholes behind their eyes. They are internal ears. So both seals and sea lions have ears, but sea lions have these external ears. Oh, Golden Elementary is wondering, what do seals and sea lions eat? That's a great question. Now, out in the ocean, they can eat a variety of fish. They can eat squid. They even sometimes eat octopus. Here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we offer our seals and our sea lions two kinds of fish and squid. So we offer them capelin, herring, and squid. And we weigh it out for them every single morning, go through each fish to make sure it is top quality for them. And some of our sea lions, like Parker, eats about 40 to 50 pounds a day. Mm -hmm, that's a lot. He is our biggest California sea lion. We also have another uh, question. Do seals and sea lions have different amounts of blubber? Oh, that's a good question. Now that's going to depend a lot on size. Uh, it probably also where they live. If it's colder, they might actually put on a little bit more blubber. Um, and then of course it varies between species as well. But you are correct. They both do have blubber. Whereas another marine mammal, a sea otter, they have lots of fur to keep warm, but no blubber. So I love that you noticed all of these little rolls right here. Yes, they have that layer of fat uh, that helps them to stay nice and warm. Alrighty, so uh, let's go ahead and let's see. Let's see if we looked, well, we looked at some differences uh, between seals and sea lions with our plushies, but should we look at some real animals? Yeah, I think so too. Alrighty, let's go ahead and see if Joe has some real animals. Captain Joe? For one thing, if you take a look at this sea lion, you can see that he has big flippers both in front and back. For another difference, look closely at the sides of the head. You see those? Those are ear flaps. Sea lions have external ear flaps just like us. Now take a look at this harbor seal. And do you see any differences? Little stubby flippers in the back, little stubby paws in the front, and look at the side of its head. No ear flaps. Seals do have ears, but the only thing they have to show for it on the outside are these little holes on the side of their head. No ear flaps for them. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. So we just kind of talked about those differences, the flippers, the ear flaps or no ear flaps, and also that nice coloration. But I wonder, okay, those are all things we can see. I wonder if there's anything we can't see. Hmm, let's go ahead all and right, maybe... All right, Oh, let's listen. As part of every Ocean Ranger's training, we must all learn the majestic call of the California sea lion. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> and now, the harvest seal. Uh, Joe, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything for the harbor seal. What's going on well, that there? That is because the harbor seal is stealthy and quiet. Hmm, okay, I, that makes sense. Can we see them maybe in their natural habitat? How about that? Well, of course. All right, awesome. 
Sea lions tend to hunt in shallow water, both out in the open and in our local kelp forests, eating many different kinds of fish and squid, and they can hold their breath for about nine minutes. Now seals, on the other hand, although they enjoy those fish and squid, they also enjoy crab and shrimp on the bottom of the ocean floor, and they can hold their breaths for up to 30 minutes. Oh, very cool. Wow, imagine if you could hold your breath for 30 minutes. That would be pretty cool. Now, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to take care of these animals at the aquarium. Let's see, I wonder if Joe has any friends that maybe work with these animals? Hmm, Joe, do you have any friends that work with these animals? Maybe uh, with the seals or sea lions? You think you what could ask them? What a great question. Hmm? I know quite a few people that work you here do. with our okay. seals and sea lions. Let's go oh, ahead okay. and go ask them. What do you say? All right, that sounds great, awesome. So Joe is gonna go find someone who works with our seals and sea lions. All right, but in the meantime, we have a few more questions coming in. Oh, Miss Murphy's class at Golden Elementary, good morning. Do both seals and sea lions have whiskers? You betcha. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. Yes, both seals and sea lions do have whiskers. So this is one of our harbor seals and she actually has really big whiskers and really big eyebrows. Now, not all seals have those big of eyebrows, but Shelby, this one here, uh, she definitely does. And sea lions also have those long whiskers. Now, those long whispers, whiskers <laughs> are called vibrissae. Now, they're called vibrissae because they sense vibrations in the water. So they can actually kind of move those whiskers around. So if they're underwater and maybe it's not super great visibility and they're trying to find something, well, they can use those whiskers to kind of look around. Also, marine mammals sometimes lose their eyesight later in age. So they can actually use that as another, another way to help them find food and sense their surroundings. So again, those are called vibrissae. Oh, another question. Uh, do they get sick if they eat too much fish? <laughs> good question. They are pretty good at self-regulating. So that means that they're pretty good at knowing, hey, I've had enough. I'm good. I'm not going to keep eating. Um, so here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we do only offer them a set amount of food. Uh, we have it based off of body size and activity and all of that. So we don't offer them too much or too little. Uh, but if for some reason we need to kind of bulk them up a little bit, get a little more weight on them, we can give them even more food. But they are pretty good at self-regulating and letting us know, hey, I'm full. I'm good. Thank you. Um, actually, Parker, our large California sea lion, sometimes he gets really, really big, usually around the summertime. And that's because he's a big male. So his body is telling him, hey, I need to bulk up and get really big so I can hang out on the beach and find some girlfriends. So he puts on a lot of weight and he eats a lot more during that time when he puts on weight and then over, over the next few weeks, he actually won't eat very much. Sometimes he won't eat every day and that is normal for them. So they're really good at regulating, but it does change with the season. Great question. Queenie is wondering, how do we know when seals and sea lions are hungry? Great question. So we feed our seals and sea lions at a really consistent time every single day. So we typically have four feeds for them every single day and we separate their food into four different buckets and then can go up again within the same about 15 minutes. So they are pretty good at knowing exactly when we are coming. Uh, but ours don't really get too hungry because again, we are feeding them uh, very consistently, but if a seal or maybe a sea lion out in the ocean is hungry, they're gonna, they're gonna start to go look for some food and go hunting. Ooh, let's see, Anthony. Ooh, how do we train seals and sea lions? We will talk about that. Remember, Joe is going off to go find someone right now who is uh, actually going to be helping us learn how to train these animals. Mrs. Jones' class is wondering if they have different tails. Oh, I don't know if we have a good view of their tails. We'll see what we can find. My friend James is uh, looking into that. But hmm, they don't really have different tails. Now, their hind 
flippers are different and those often get mistaken for their tails. But they do have their hind flippers. Let me pull out a, a plushie here. They do have their hind flippers, but this is not their tail. Their tail is actually this little nub in here. So they both do have small tails, but their hind flippers are different. Because remember, sea lions can kind of use them to tuck under themselves to walk, whereas seals cannot. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's see. The, oh, you can kind of see the tail right here. See it right in between whoop, those little hind flippers right here. Awesome. Oh, and uh, Mrs. Jones class is wondering also, how many seals and sea lions do we have here? Great question. Right now, we have four California sea lions. We have Parker, he's that big, big, big one. We have Chase, Kane, and Harpo. And then we have four uh, harbor seals as well. So we have Ellie, she's the oldest. She is in her, actually, she turned 32 yesterday. So we have Ellie. We also have Shelby. She has had three babies, one of which still lives here, and that is Kaya. And then we have the dad, Troy, as well. So we have four California sea lions and four harbor seals. Ooh, great question coming on in again. Lots of questions. I love it. Seal flippers are not very long. That was a great observation, but they're wondering, well, how do they pick up their food then? Great question. Well, if you didn't have hands, hmm, let's see. If you put your hands behind your back and you sat down at the table, what might you use? That's right, your mouth. They are very good at using their mouth. Uh, they don't really use their, sh their front flippers uh, for feeding. Actually, even though sea lions have long front flippers too, they don't really use them for feeding either because uh, they're going to be eating more uh, things like fish, right? Where if they're swimming in the water, uh, they're actually just going to go ahead and catch it. So they don't really use their short front flippers or long front flippers for feeding. Great question. Um, Miss Sarada's class, Mrs. Sarada's class, how much time do they spend on land versus in the ocean? Hmm, well, a lot of the time they do sleep on land. They do like to sleep on land and a lot of them do like to come out of the water to sun themselves. So they are out of the water for a good amount of time. Uh, they like to sun themselves maybe on buoys, on the rocks. So you will commonly see that sometimes even on docks. Uh, but again, all their food lives in the water, right? So uh, they, do, they do spend a lot of time hunting as well. Great question. Now, Mrs. Murphy's class is wondering, do seals and sea lions like to play? And how can you tell the difference between a male and a female? Great question. So uh, for, in, in general, in general, uh, how to tell apart a male California sea lion from a female California sea lion is really to look at their size. Now size males are gonna be much bigger. And if they're a mature male, they're gonna have a big bump on their head. Oh, just like this. They're gonna have a big bump on their head. Whereas these two are males as well. They're a lot smaller, um, at, but they look a little more kind of like a female uh, because Parker is the main big dominant male in this exhibit. Uh, the other two are not gonna get quite as big. But size, size for the most part. Now do seals and sea lions like to play? They sure do. Uh, they love interaction with people here at the aquarium. But if you see one out in the ocean, should you try to go up and play with it? Hmm, probably not. No, these animals are wild animals. So you do wanna keep your distance. They may look super cuddly and playful, but again, we have to keep in mind that they are not like our dogs or cats at home. So here at the aquarium, when they are used to people and we have very, uh, very important safety measures in place and everything like that, uh, we can actually really interact with them a lot with toys, with training, lots of different things. But out in the ocean, they might want to play with each other, but maybe not with us. Alrighty, everyone. So let's go ahead and check in with Captain Joe because he was going to go look at, at, for someone who works with these animals, and I wonder if he found someone. He's had some time now. Let's go ahead and check in with him. Joe! 
Joe? Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jimmy. He's a mammologist taking care of our sea lions, seals, and also our sea otters. And we have our special guest, Parker, here with us today. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Wave hi, Parker. Say hi. Good boy. We're going to talk about our training. We train these animals so that we, they can participate in their health care. We can ask them to open their mouths. We can target and move our fingers over their eyes when we give them eye drops. We also want them to be physically fit and want them to think about the behavior. So when Parker sticks out his tongue at everybody like he's getting ready to do, tongue, tongue, good. Yeah. I say good. And then he gets excited because he knows he's going to get a fish. That's herring. Then we have capelin and we also have squid. So he's very focused on the bucket because he knows he's going to get what we call a reward. If you guys do something good, you may get a quarter. Um, if Joe's going to be good, I might buy him lunch after we do this. Yeah. Training. But the training is really important because we want them to be comfortable with us. Good. Good boy. So there's a variety of behaviors that we do train them. Salute. Good. Good boy. So we ask for the behavior either verbally with our mouths or we do a hand signal. And so Joe's going to do a hand signal. He's going to get his right uh, hand and point to his ear. Look at Parker and point to your ear. Good boy. All right. And now if you get your right hand and shake your index finger back and forth, he's going to do a no. Do a Parker. Good. Good boy. Now stick your right thumb out. Good. good boy. Good. Now look over there and give, give him a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Hey, come here. Parker, give me a big smooch. Thanks, good. buddy. Good boy. Good so that's just a little bit about our training and having him sit here for the whole time that we're filming is a really good experience for him. And now, since he did so good, I'm going to have him um, lift up. Do you want to wave bye or wave? Say bye. You want to dance? Dance for him a little bit. Do some behaviors. Nice. Lift it up. Lift it up. Good oh boy. Now we're going to do a jackpot, meaning he did everything I wanted him to do. So I'm going to go back in the exhibit and give him all of his fish all at once. Awesome. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're Thank welcome. you so much, bye. Parker. Say bye. Good boy. Let's go. What an awesome time with Parker, our California sea lion. Boys and girls, we're going to send it back to you at the studio. Awesome. How cool was that? Thank you, Jimmy, Parker, and Joe. How cool was that? that we got to see a sea lion do a handstand. Uh, that's pretty amazing, but that's so cool. Why we train them for those really important reasons. For, of course, um, kind of like PE class, for that physical exercise. Parker, again, that sea lion you just met, he can weigh about 800 pounds. So to lift himself up on just his front flippers takes a lot of strength. So it's keeping them nice and healthy and in shape. Just like if you had PE class or maybe go to the gym, it's the same idea. So that's again, one reason why we train them. Another is for mental stimulation, always making sure uh, that they are thinking about something new or maybe something that they already know. It's kind of like school for them, keeping them mentally engaged. And then also for healthcare. Now, healthcare is super important. Now, you saw just how big Parker was. If you wanted him to maybe uh, give some blood for a sample just to make sure he's healthy, well, that's kind of scary. And that can be scary for him. That can be scary for the trainer involved. That can be scary for everyone and a little stressful. We want to make it as stress-free as possible. So what we do is we can actually train them to voluntarily give us things like blood or look inside their mouth, things that can help them in their healthcare. And they're trained to know, hey, this isn't scary. Nothing bad's gonna happen. And uh, then it's less stressful for everyone involved. Now, someone was asking, uh, how do we train them? And Jimmy talked a little bit about why we train them, but also um, how we train them is that positive reinforcement, giving him that food, letting him know, hey, you did a really good job. I'm gonna give you some snacks. And they love food. Again, Parker can eat about 40 to 50 pounds a day. So that's one way uh, that we can reinforce that behavior. But how do we get them to do those behaviors? Well, we usually start with very simple things such as a target. So it can either be your fist or a long buoy on a stick. And basically they know, hey, I touch this certain body parts to this buoy. Oh, here we go. Here's a great, oh yeah, it's me. <laughs> There's, um, that's um, actually my hand and on 
the nose of one of the seals and that's called a target and she knows that hey if i touch my nose to this hand then uh, i get a reward and then we can start to kind of move the hand or the target pole in different directions so uh, say we wanted them to follow us down the beach well we could just start moving that target and they know hey i gotta stick with that target and then i will get that reinforcement now here we're brushing uh, ellie's teeth now ellie knows that hey this is a behavior that i'm going to get rewarded for it's not scary at all and it helps her to keep her teeth clean do you brush your teeth every day yeah, I hope so. I hope all of you said yes. Well, so does Ellie. Ellie has great teeth and she is 32 years old. And that's because she actually gets her teeth brushed every single day. And pretty cool, she even uses an electric toothbrush, which is really cool. So uh, that's kind of a little bit about how we train our animals. I also saw one more question coming on in. Do they have good eyesight? Yes, uh, they do, but marine mammals can lose it uh, later in life um, just like just like maybe other animals can as well they're always in the sun in the water so sometimes when they get older their eyesight isn't as good uh, but yes uh, they do they can see pretty well uh, another question Ooh, what if an animal got sick and needed help before it was fully trained to get a checkup? Ah, oh, good question. So if an animal is not fully trained to maybe come into a, a, a cage or a pen so we can transport them to somewhere like the Molina Animal Care Center, which is our veterinarian hospital on site, well, uh, then we can also just have our, our veterinarian come up to the exhibit. Sometimes that's preferred for certain things because, well, we don't have to transport an 800 pound animal, which again, can be stressful in itself. So uh, we can actually have our veterinarian come on up to the exhibit. Um, and that's one way we can, we can have them, tr you know, checked out without being fully trained. Uh, but usually they'll, they trust us. We kind of build a relationship. Um, and so if we needed to maybe touch something um, that they're maybe not trained to, uh, sometimes if they allow it, we'll give them a jackpot of food. But other than that, uh, we do have to be very careful because again, they still are wild animals. So we might not be able to check a certain thing. Um, but uh, luckily they do, they do really build that relationship with their trainers. Alrighty, everyone. Well, looks like we have to get going. You did such a great job today exploring seals, sea lions, and well, how we train them. So I hope you learned a little bit about how we train them, why we train them, and also, do you remember the differences between seals and sea lions? Uh-huh, exactly. Sea lions have ear flaps on their sides of their heads. Seals do not. Harbor seals have that kind of cookies and cream coloration. California sea lions are just brown. Uh, they also move differently. Which one walks on all fours? Uh-huh, that's right, those California sea lions. Whereas seals, remember they move like an inchworm. That fancy word that you can impress all your friends with. Again, it's called galumphing. Uh-huh, it's a real word. <laughs> and then, of course, harbor seals don't make too much noise. They kind of go, but that's about it. Whereas California sea lions are very vocal and bark. Alrighty, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for our Aquarium Online Academy. Now, if we do have any teachers watching with your students, teachers, if you could go ahead and text in uh, the a number of students that you have watching. Uh, we would really appreciate that. We take all the data we can um, and look at it to better serve our communities with these free programs and it would help us out a lot. Alrighty. Thanks, everyone. See you later.